Okay. Let's get started. So, uh, the one of this week's challenge, it's about the art of problem solving and decision making, especially again into the workplace. Uh, today we'll be embarking on a journey to explore the more dynamic aspects of these two things, problem solving and decision making in the workplace. We are going to be looking into um, what, what's our experience when it comes to strategically solve different problems that occur in in our workplaces and also how we get to take decisions and how can we um, take that kind of advantage like take the problem as an advantage and turn it into an opportunity that's what we are going to be looking into into this challenge and first i want to understand um from the recent challenge that your team faced, can you share with us how did you approach that challenge, that problem, and what decisions did you make to overcome it? Speaking specifically for the last week, I know that we had a team project, and there were there were so many. The, of course, it was a project. It was a challenge that you were supposed to be working on. I want to understand on the team dynamic how did you approach the problem and also what kind of decision did you make don't uh just share it on a perspective of teamwork not a technical part just tell us how you managed to dive into different problems that you face for instance some teams had teammates that are not active so i want to know how did you approach that problem how did you approach them how did you communicate with them and if the problem consistently kept happening from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to Friday with them not communicating with you, what decision did you make? You know, that's one example. But if you have also a different experience from the previous week's team, uh, team challenge, please share with us. You know, just give us the tea. Give us the tea. I hope <laughs> I hope that's a strength that you also know. It's like just just give us more information about what happened. Uh we'll um pick people, a few people just to tell us. Oh no, no, I won't pick any volunteers who want to share with us. Any volunteer. You won't share us the uh, the technical part of what you did, just the team dynamic. How was it? Any problems you faced? How did you approach them? What decision did you make after all? I'm waiting for a few volunteers. Uh, if we don't get one, I will go ahead and choose um, uh, Abraham. Okay, yeah, oh yes, please Abraham, write your reflection. Rodolph, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, please, I would like to, to reiterate what you said to make sure that I'm in the same alignment with you. So you want to know how in the previous week, if we, we face uh, any um, teamwork problem, how did you solve it? Yep, yep. Is that correct? Yep, okay. right. Okay, cool. So um, in my team, uh, as you know, the team has three members at the beginning. And when we start discussing the team, um, one, of, one of our team members were not reacting at all. So that was, we, we, we tried to contact him, but no answer. So at that moment, we can handle ourselves. So what do we do? Uh, the two remaining ones, the other teammate and I, we, we, got, we decided to inform the management. 
because also the management also requests us to come to them if you are facing any challenge like that. So we come to the management, we expose our problem that one of our team members was not reacting at all. Okay, so they rebuilt our team and uh, we were three and suddenly <laughs> my other teammates uh, has a personal problem. We don't know which problem and we remain to um, hopefully and the 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 last team member that uh, they, they, add, they added to us uh, he play very well a good team a good team member i really appreciate that and i'm even grateful for him uh, i'm very grateful for him so that's basically how we did it and uh, i would like to ask another question by the way so if uh, in a team okay you are facing struggling and uh, we try to contact we try to solve the problem between us and it's not working. Uh, can we go directly in the management? This question is uh, in the enterprise. I'm asking if you, we were in the enterprise, how can we solve that kind of problem? So thank you. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Rodolph. Actually, I was going to ask the same question to everyone else who's hearing. So they started as a team of three people and one didn't show up for the task, and another one had a personal issue. So how, what do you think of Rodolphe's approach of reaching out to the management and requesting another teammate? And how do you think that the other two teammates who miss, we feel about this? I mean, I, I, I want to understand your view. Yes, Yvonne? Uh, I think that as for Rodolphe, if the, he has reached the teammates, let's say like three times and they have not yet communicated or they haven't reached back, it is advisable for him to actually go to the manager just above him, not the top manager, the manager that assigned you that team. That manager, you're supposed to go to that manager and tell that manager that your teammates are not working and tell the manager that you have tried to reach out to them three times or a couple of times and they have not given you feedback. I am specifically saying three times because sometimes you may reach out the first time and maybe the person is far away, you know, things happen. And then you may reach out the second time and something else happened, but people say the third time is a charm. So if it happens for the third time, then you know that, yes, this person definitely doesn't want to work with me that is what I would suggest mm -hmm. Rodolf to do. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Actually, yes, beautiful approach when it comes to, uh, to how you say that they should be approaching like the closest manager about the issue. But for me, I also always suggest that before reaching out to the manager, you know, as a, as a lawyer teammate, it's always okay to leave a message to your teammates that you are going to be reaching up the manager about uh, the issue so that they get some heads up when they get reached out and being asked uh, what happened, like why are not they present, they actually get to know that, uh, you know, you've reported the issue. It's always, um, it brings the kind of team spirits and it shows that you're not trying to report them in a negative way. Like, you're not angry, you, you know, you are just doing what's necessary, you know. But yeah, thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, let's go uh, through the content. Like, why do we care about problem solving in a workplace? Really, why do we care about this? Why is it an essential thing to do? Uh, it's mainly because as managers, we constantly strive for uh, you know great functioning of our teams and organizations, or even as a teammate, you don't want to be in a very bad team environment. You always want that functioning and uplifting and motivating and, you know, collaborative team. So a proactive problem solving culture always enhances, it always enhances collaboration and morale to everyone who's involved. 
it enhances efficiency and productivity because everyone when they are satisfied and happy to be in the place then we go extra mile to even bring that innovation and creativity or even uh get to be proactive when it comes to addressing different small small or even bigger challenges that are occurring in the team this is why we care about problem solving in our workplace we always want to ensure that we are having a very well healthy and functioning team that's why we care about problem solving and then why is our approach to decision making also crucial it's because um strategic decision making everyone knows is the cornerstone of the organizational progress everywhere you know it's always about the decisions we make uh, that drives us towards our goals towards effectively allocating the resources that we have towards minimizing any potential risks or uncertainties and the overall it enables us um, to achieve all the assigned goals, you know. That, that's why we always, when we care about problem solving, we have to always care about decision making. What kind of decisions are we making, you know? Will it bring conflicts or are they going to allow our organization to progress and prosper? You know, if it's a, an issue regarding let's say for instance the tools that are not enough within the tools that we are using within the company what kind of decision that we make are we going to allocate more resources into christmas celebration of the company or will we invest that resources into purchasing subscription for that tool you know it's always the decision making is always crucial because of just these big four key things driving organizational progress allocating resources effectively, minimizing risks, and also enabling goal achievement. So what do we consider? Why, what, what do we consider um, in problem solving? What do we solve our problem? Always, we have to define the problem clearly. If there is any existing problem, you have to go deeper into it. What is the problem? If there are any relevant data or information you need to gather to support the information you have, then you have to gather them. Then identify possible solutions to that problem according to the means that you currently have or the current reality within the workplace. What possible solutions can you um, suggest to that specific problem? And then also when you have a bunch of solutions that you you can propose, you have to evaluate each, each one of them and choose the best solution and then implement the solution and ensure that you are monitoring and adjusting as needed as time goes by. You know, so for instance, to Rodolphe team members who were not active and probably he goes and reports it to Rodas, who is the cohort manager. What does Rodas do? He doesn't go immediately and be like, oh, he missed this project, so it's a fail for him, specifically. It's a fail completely. No, he just, she just goes and look for more information. What, what, made, what, what, were, what were those personal issues that made uh, the problem, the problem specifically? And then she gets to identify different possible solutions that she can take from there, evaluate and choose the best solution and probably even get to have the conversation with that specific team member to understand uh, if she is on board with the, uh, with the approach that they are going to be making from the problem, from her being absent within the project that is mandatory to be present on. And then key consideration in decision-making now, uh, when we are taking that decision, it's always, uh, important to clarify the decision to be made gather necessary information as well again then identify any alternative evaluate the pros and cons and then make decision communicate and then implement decision super very very important it's always important also to uh, to consider that even though we are taking this these specific steps 
always ensure that the choices you are taking align with the organizational objectives. You know, um, and ensuring also that the decision you are taking are effective and doesn't bring any kind of uh, negative view within the team or even within the company. This is where evaluating the pros and the cons of the decision you are taking is really, uh, um, you know, becomes very important. Like, yeah, like the rock he's saying, we gotta make the best possible decisions we can always. So something I thought that is going to be helping us through this challenge, aside from the slides, uh, or the steps or the guiding points we just talked about before. It's a must mindset. Always, always when you are solving problems, always when you are taking any kind of decision, it's very important to have this specific mindset. You should embrace a growth mindset, especially when something that is challenging you to make more investment, to make more time for it, to make, have further deep conversation with the people who are involved you should go always within that conversation with a neutral mind you know in, in, embrace growth embrace anything that is going to be coming from that discussion embrace a growth mindset because it might be challenging you but it's necessary number two foster culture of collaboration and open communication to any problem that is occurring either within the team or within the projects that are ongoing or within uh, the company in general always, always foster the culture of open communication so that you get to understand everyone's view, everyone's feedback, so that you have so many different uh, solutions or even different points to consider when you are making your final decision. Then be adaptable and open to change. Oh, really always. People will come and challenge every specific let's say there is a project that you developed for instance uh you know and then uh let, let's not even talk about a random project let's say i'm sitting with abdullahi as the career team and also with arun and then we get to think about what kind of challenges do we think is are necessary to be building the confidence within 10 academy trainees and then you give different ideas but you get to understand uh, from the feedback that Abdullahi and Arun are providing me, I get to understand that it's totally, they're seeing everything in a totally different mirror, you know? And what do I have to do in that moment? Feel angry that my powers are being rejected? No, I'm going to be adaptable and open to change, open to learning more, because people will not criticize your powers without just giving you a view of why they are criticizing your powers. So it's always really nice to have an open mindset and be adaptable and open to any kind of change that is going to be coming from that. And then encourage creativity and innovation, especially when it comes to decision making. Encourage that people think out of the box about something that has never been implemented within the company before or something they just learned anywhere else, uh, you know, or anything just from their creative mindsets encourage that they bring those kind of ideas because it what makes the company or the organization strive and then number second to the last take calculated risks you know i talked about for instance a tool that is not available within the company and you absolutely know that you need that tool to ease your work or to even fasten your work you know and the company probably is not in a very good financial state to be covering that tool subscription so what are you going to do as a manager you have to take calculated risks am i going to just to be paying for that subscription for two months only when i'm pretty sure that i won't be able to cover the third one you know would that be a good solution really would it be or am I going just to look for any other alternative that matches the current reality of our finances? The number last, learn from the failures and successes. Learn from any failures that led to that problem 
and also any successes any ideas or anything else that also happened in the past as a success story that will help you enhance any decision that you are currently making um you know from that specific problem that occurred so that is it let's go through specifically the problem solving and uh decision making challenge but before that i would like to take a few questions do we have any questions or is everything clear for now okay i can see a few people saying that everything is clear okay that's amazing that's amazing thank you for the reaction so uh we have our challenge here the background is just uh it's the you've joined a new company where various teams collaborate on different projects and tasks and while the company is known for its innovative ideas there is a growing concern about declining productivity levels this is the main concern there is a growing concern about declining productivity levels company-wide so employees have been reporting feeling overwhelmed missing deadlines and experiencing burnouts and your task is to investigate the root cause of this productivity decline and propose effective solutions to enhance this workplace productivity first we have different data that has been represented let's go through them quickly so an employee survey has been conducted and these results include responses from employees where they express concerns about workload time management work-life balance communication and the support of these challenges okay i hope there are no noise in the background so um then we have this data few people 72 percent of employees report feeling overwhelmed by their workload 68 struggle to manage their time effectively due to frequent interruptions 58 uh find it challenging to maintain a healthy work balance because probably they are super overwhelmed those are the specific causes that you're going to be coming with then 85 they believe that there are communication breakdowns affecting project deadlines and 63 percent remote employees who are remote this is a company that has a hybrid model so some of some of them they work in the office others work remotely and to those who work remotely they have been f reporting feeling isolated and disconnected from the team you know for instance just because so many uh high so many teams in a hybrid model you find those in the office setup being so much connected than uh uh than the ones in a who are working remotely specifically so um also not for only the remote employees some of the on-site employees express concerns about the perceived lack of ability and recognition for their contributions compared to remote team members so I was going just to be giving out examples, but I will be answering the challenge. So I will just read out and uh, tell you why I'm saying that I will, actually, I will be answering the, the challenge, which is not okay. You will find that out in a very short time, in a few minutes. Then the project data. We have the data that includes project timeline, completion rates, and instant missed deadlines. We have one of the projects that missed the deadline by 20%. Project Y that exceeded the budget by 15%. Terrible. 60% of recent projects that first delays at least one week, each of the projects that was ongoing. Then also when it comes to employee performance metrics, we have one department which is named Team A, performance score that decreased by 10% in the last quarter. And then also Team B, overall project completion rates that dropped from 95% to 82 in the past six months. I'm actually feeling like this company is, you know, is hanging on a rope because, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the percentage of the uh, productivity decline is really super crazy. So what is our challenge? What are we going to be doing about it? You are going to analyze this company productivity issues using the data provided 
and write your thoughts on the impact each issue might have on the company in both short term and long term. Then also, let us know. Oh, sorry, um, I need to change something. Okay, let's proceed. The very first question is the root cause analysis from the data provided. What do you think might have been the root cause of each issue? Let's say when we are talking about 72% uh, of employees reporting being, being overwhelmed by their workloads, what do you think might have been the cause for this result? For them being um, you know, overwhelmed on the project's data, what do you think probably led to this deadline by 20%? You know, considering what we have here, and you don't have to imagine, just consider what we have here. What do you think has led to this deadline uh, being missed on a very, you know, on a very high percentage, like 20%? Consider what we have here and be as specific when it comes to your explanation. Uh, just don't say just because uh, the employees were overwhelmed. They might be overwhelmed, but still meet the deadline. You know, just give us a detailed answer to that question, to, to, um, sorry, to your proposed root cause. Then B, by analyzing this company's productivity issues, using the data provided as well, you are going to be writing your thoughts on the impact each issue might have on the company in both short term and long term. Each issue, I'm talking about, about the employee performance here. How do you think this employee performance, the combined, how do you think it's going to affect the company in the long run and short run if not resolved? Here as well, on the project uh, issues that we have, how do you think, wh what do you find, uh, 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 you know, wh what do you find as the impact they are going to have also to the company in the short run or long run? And then continue also to the employee performance metrics that from department to department. Then number C, develop a set of practical solution to address the identified productivity challenges. So we have checked the root cause. We have looked into the possible impact if not resolved. Then what are we going to do? Suggest practical solutions to address the identified productivity challenges. And when you are suggesting solution, also be as clear as possible. Sorry. Uh, be as clear as possible for us to understand uh, what you mean by every solution that you're going to be providing. For instance, something with us that we don't have here, um, about the tools again, you know, uh, if it was a project that has been delayed just because of the absence of a certain tool, specify how you are going to be providing that solution. Are you going to pay for that subscription or are you going just to uh, suggest another alternative that can so still solve the problem with just buy without buying the subscription or what are you going to do i hope that's clear and everything else is as usual it's sure to read the marking rubric we are going to look into your data analysis we want to understand how well you understood this data and then the root cause identification why do you think are the root cause identifications here then the solution proposes then the decisions you took and then we are also going to be looking into the clarity and organization you're having to the problem solving approach i mean on every response that you shared and also uh the decisions that you took the solutions that you are proposing to take number last we are going to be looking into the grammar and language again um so why do we think this is very important in life, especially uh, in our workplace or workspace life? It's because um, 
this scenario it allows us to apply the problem solving process individually to our real world workplace challenge you will have um the experience of developing an analytical thinking decision making and then also problem solving specifically while working on these actionable solutions to enhance your team's success so that is it about today's careers challenge let's open the floor for any questions or any clarifications any questions or any clarification or is the challenge easy to understand and self-explanatory like are we ready to go for it Okay, are you here with me, guys? Yes. Okay, uh, can I have some thumbs up is, if everything is clear? Okay, so Hussein, yes, you can go. Hussein, do you have any... Problem? Yes, Rodolf. Okay, Pascal. Uh, I can see. I, I I went to the drive, and I see the presentation and the the assessment I have whether regarding the career is uh, for the previous week. So, uh, if you mind adding this one. Come again, Rodolf. Come again. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying I don't find this one. Oh, okay. Okay, we just name it uh, week four. Okay. Because I went to my driver and it's, I I saw week four problem solving, so I thought it was it was uh, the last we did like uh, last week. Mm, oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh thank you i'm changing that it should be week five um yeah it was week four because we were counting the learning weeks but since we also included the week where we went for christmas break then it should be week five okay uh who's uh, yes, the, the, the slide and the challenge talk are already in the slides, uh, sorry, in the drive. Let me see if this one is also shared there. It should be. Okay, all of them are there. Everyone has access, but also let me pass the link here for easy access. So Hussein said, are we supposed to provide the EDA or just a repost on it and the final results? Uh, Hussein, what do you mean by EDA? Hussein, can you speak? How oh, the code for the data analysis? No, this is an untechnical exercise. So uh, you just do the data analysis, and if there is any kind of average percentage that you want to share from the report of your combined uh, data analysis, just share it. But you know, no code. It's an untechnical challenge. So. It's easy data. Yes, there there is some data analysis, but it's just easy data, really. You don't need the code. Uh, that is it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you in the community building session. I still uh, we can stop the recording. <laughs>